Hey guys, it's MJ, the student actuary. This is chapter 13, CA1, the money market. So in this chapter, we're going to be looking at the types of instruments, their risk characteristics, who are the main players, and the reasons for holding money. So what are the types of instruments? There are treasury bills, there's local authority bills, there's bills of exchange, there's commercial paper, there's call deposits, and there's term deposits. In CA1, you need to know what are the pros and cons and the whole characteristics of all of these six types of instruments. Okay, when it comes to risk characteristics, remember we use that acronym called System T, and that's just you know the security, the yield, the spread, the tax, the expenses, whatever, whatever, like that. So let's check risk characteristics of money. Okay, it's good security, although that does depend on the borrower. If you're lending money to someone, you know, there's a chance that they may not pay you back. But if you lend it to the bank, the bank is likely to pay you back, although they don't always. Um, return is always an income. You don't put in like 10 Rand and then come back and tomorrow it's worth 12 Rand. Um, if that does happen, it's because that 2 Rand was interest and that is that interest income. So you're not getting any capital uh, appreciation. Um, as far as the, it's got quite a loose indirect link with inflation. So if inflation is quite high, you might lose your, um, the value of the money. But that's nothing to be too concerned about because in general, we have got quite a low expected return because the risk is quite low. There's a stable market value. It's best for the short term. It's got low dealing expenses. You know, no one really pays you. You don't really have to pay a person to take your money. It's very liquid. I mean, money is the most liquid um, asset out there. Very marketable because everybody can use money and it is taxed as an income, as mentioned above. So who are the main players in the money market? So you've got your big bank. Um, this, I think this is the Reserve Bank. They're the lenders of last resort. They buy and sell bills and they do this to establish the short-term interest rate. Then you have your commercial banks, they control the liquidity levels and there is a little bit of a systemic risk if one of them blows up, but what they do is they lend and borrow to companies. So reasons for holding, um, or reasons for your asset class to be in the money market, it can protect the monetary value, um, you can keep it for opportunity. I think Warren Buffett is famous for saying uh, a good hunter always has a loaded gun. And because it's very liquid, you can, if an opportunity arises, you can pounce on it. Um, you also hold in the money market when the other assets are uncertain. Or when you've just received cash flow from one of your other projects and you're just putting it in there temporary. And or you have to meet some short-term commitments like paying wages and all that type of stuff. Okay, but normally the money market is held by people who have got a pessimistic uh, view on the economy. They might think that the interest rates are going to rise, the, econ the economy is going to go into recession, the domestic currency is going to weaken, and in that case you want to hold overseas cash, or the general um, economy is uncertain. And the reason for this is because the other asset classes will fall quite a lot. And therefore, people will then move to the money market. And if you're there before, then you're going to reap some of the benefits. Okay, then what are the economic influences on short-term government bonds? This is a very nice exam question. Um, and you'll also have to look at the other factors, such as property market stimulation, political reasons, and mechanics. But in a sense, what you want to know is that short-term government bonds are linked to the short-term interest rates and that they're quite a close substitute. And so what is the economic influence on short-term government bonds? You can see by my diagram, when this thing decreases, economic growth is going to increase, inflation will increase, and the exchange rate will decrease. And then yeah, feel free to pause and go through all those other things. But yeah, that is kind of just a very quick introduction to the money market for CA1. Um, tune in next time as I shall be talking about the bond market. But yeah, study hard, guys, and keep up the good work. Cheers.